Oh, wait, I forgot to do one quick thing. What's up, everybody? First of all, how are we? Let me just do a couple quick little jobbies here as I'm did Sunday morning. What are you going to do? All right, there we go. Let me make sure we're up. You know me, I have to see it. YouTube, you hanging in? What are you doing, YouTube? You gonna, yep, YouTube, YouTube's awake. Then let me, now I, I don't have them simultaneous here, so I don't know who was first and who was second. I wanna say Rockfin was probably first today, actually. I wanna say that Rockfin kicked in before the YouTube. Uh, what's up, everybody? We're doing a special stream. It's Sunday morning. Oh, I, I was trying to do the Nancy Pelosi thing, I, I flubbed it. Uh, good morning. Sunday morning. Is that better? Did I do it right? Uh, we got a special stream today. First of all, shout out to everyone who makes this show possible. Our friends over at Indie Left. Indie Left is the only place to find all the content creators you know and love because they curate a list and they update it twice a day. They get all the streamers, the article writers, and they curate a list. They update it twice a day to find out everything they got going on and to subscribe to their Discord. Check them out at independentleft.media. Now, folks... First of all, happy Sunday. I know it's not usual that uh, that we stream on a Sunday, but today is uh, today is a special day because uh, one of my favorite one of my favorite new shows and new networks that is out there is the Fred Hampton Leftist. Love what they're doing over at the Fred Hampton Leftist. And you know what else I love a bunch too? Special announcements. So you combine those two things. How cool is that? That makes a super awesome Sunday. And guess what? We got both those things going on for you this Sunday. Are you stoked? Get stoked. You better be stoked. Please welcome back to the show uh, one of my favorite people to talk to. And again, a member of the Fred Hampton leftist, Mr. James Fauntleroy. And he's got an announcement. What's up, James? <laughs> Yo, you gassed me up so much right there. I was like, <laughs> how do I even follow that? I'm just like, what? I'm like, what? <laughs> You talking about me? <laughs> Good okay. to see you, my friend. <laughs> it is awesome to see you two again, my brother Ron. It's, it's Cheers, uh, man. it is a, a lovely Sunday. There is a lot in the news that we are going over with today, and I cannot wait to touch on some of those things. But first, so I am on this stream, especially with Ron today, because we do have a special announcement on Fred Hampton Leftist. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Okay, whatever. We are actually launching on Rockfin starting this week. And we will be putting a lot of our content on Rockfin. Um, we are going to also have some uh, exclusive content as well. And yeah, so I, I just hope you guys are able to, uh, if you guys are following us on YouTube or Twitter, um, Facebook, uh, Twitch, what have you. You guys can also check us out on Rockfin. Uh, Ron was gracious enough to let me come on his show today to make this announcement, and I am forever grateful. Well, I'm so thrilled to hear it, man. And, and uh, you know, welcome. To, I mean, I'm on Rockfin, too, so welcome to Rockfin. It's it's awesome to uh, to, to have you guys uh, there. And mm -hmm. um, But I, I guess give a real quick for anyone who maybe isn't familiar. I know, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of my viewers are already familiar with what y'all do, but, but, but yeah. give a kind of quick summary of, of what the Fred Hampton leftists are all about for anyone who may not be familiar. Okay. So Fred Hamp, shaking sure to make sure my, my fan is off. Um, but Fred Hampton was a revolutionary. He was, uh, involved in, uh, he was a socialist, Marxist, communist, uh, revolutionary that, believed in the proletariat, the workers. And he realized that through black liberation, there has to be solidarity with other people in a multiracial working class coalition in order to bring equity to black people so that we can have equality across the board. So if you notice, if you look at the uh, at Fred Hampton and the Black Panthers, they also united with the Young Patriots. They were also a anti-capitalist group, um, as well as uh, the Young Lords as well. They were Latino and they were an anti-capitalist group. So uh, here at the Fred Hampton Leftist, we are all about education. We're also all about activism. Uh, we have activists within our group of hosts. Rome and Afeni are actually activists on the ground 
Rome does his tour for the poor and his tour for the poor. He's done at least 10 states already. I think he's going to Kalamazoo, Michigan next. He actually is doing that. Afini is in Washington and she has her own mutual aid program that she does there. And Afini, uh, her, her show is called Facts and Fire. And it features on our Fred Hampton Leftist Network on Saturdays at noon. And so we're all about educating people because people need to know that they deserve more. Whether you are any color or creed or sexual orientation, identification, you deserve better because this capitalist system does nothing but put us under its thumb and its neck. And we are uh, being subject to oppression by these rich oligarchs, these oppressors who want to take our labor away from us and take our wealth that we create from our labor away from us. And they want to subject us to uh, atrocities. Like, for instance, the, um, the six million households that are going, you know, that are facing eviction or the Palestinian people that are facing, you know, atrocities from a, you know, uh, totalitarian white, white supremacist government or, you know, other different types of atrocities that we face, you know, abroad. So this is about international solidarity, not just with people of color, but also working class people from Brazil to, uh, to Zimbabwe to Australia. And so that's what we're all about. And I love the fact that you pointed that out because that's something that scares yeah. the hell out of the oligarchs when people are talking yeah. across borders. Because then, especially it scares the shit out of them here in the United States because that's when they're like, oh, wait a second. They're going to find out what workers in Germany get. They're going to find out they have a 28.5 hour work week in this factory. Wait a second. They're going to find out that, that, that they get living. Wait, wait, wait a second. More people are going to find out the freedom that comes with not having your health care tied to your employment. Oh, Absolutely. shit. And that scares them, man. That scares them. This is one of those points where I wish I had a gold tooth right here. I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> But it's true. So this is one of the reasons why, and, and a lot of people, they need to figure this out, okay? So we need to get ourselves out of this bubble of uh, the propaganda bubble that the United States does. It's an imperialism propaganda bubble. And when you look at other countries, and we're not just talking about the socially democratic countries, we're also talking about other countries that the United States regards as uh, dictatorships. And you look at them, like, for instance, look at Cuba. They nearly have near no homelessness, and they also have an amazing healthcare system, and they almost have almost 100% literacy in their own country, despite what we are doing to their, well, despite our government is doing to their country. Right. So if you look at that, they're, they're pushing that down so that we won't look and get other ideas and say, hmm, this capitalism thing isn't really working out. Maybe we should try something. Maybe we should try something different. And this is what they're doing. They've been doing that since the McCarthy, the McCarthy, just the, the McCarthy days, and they're doing it now, especially with continuing that red scare. So this oh, is yeah. one of the things that you know we have to combat against. And this is one of the reasons why, uh, you know, Ron Placone, you have your show and you've been educating people so well about this. We at the Fred Hampton leftists and many other different. Uh, a, a lot of us, you know, on the left are definitely doing that, you know, from Savvy Sabs to Affini um, to Frank Analysis, Jackson Hankel, uh, uh, Robert, I forgot his last name, uh, but he calls himself Robert Durden. We all are trying to do the exact same thing. So uh, getting back to Rockfin for a little bit in this special announcement. Um, yeah. You mentioned some exclusive content. Can you give any kind of teasers, like what Rockfin folks can expect? Like what's, okay. uh... So some of us, I'm not going <laughs> to name any names, Rome. Uh, we're, too, we're too real for YouTube. Okay. Because YouTube has a definitely capitalistic agenda, and they push a lot of the mainstream media 
instead of the indie media, the indie media that we basically are. And so, you know, people like Rome, he doesn't censor himself. He doesn't like to censor himself. And we don't want him to censor himself, but in order to stay on and be able to keep our channel going, he kind of has to water himself down a little bit. And we don't, we really don't want that. And so we want him to have an outlet in the platform. And we also don't really want to do that to ourselves either. And if you notice a lot of the censorship that's going on, especially with, you know, big tech is, you know, they'll say that they're trying to censor some people on the right, but they're really actually going for people on the left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring out, okay, this is the geek side of me and it's kind of a twofold purpose. So I hope you're able to follow, but to anybody that's ever played final fantasy seven. Okay. There's a part in the game where, uh, they move the Sister Ray cannon over to Midgar. And Sephiroth is actually inside the northern crater protected by a barrier, right? And they're also trying to fight these large, gigantic uh, beings called weapons that are trying to protect the planet. And they think that they're trying to shoot the Sister Ray cannon at the weapon. But Sister Ray was just, I mean, the, the weapon was just in the way. And Sister Ray was actually aiming for the cannon. So think about the big, gigantic weapon that they're targeting that's in the way as Trump, but the barrier that's being protected as us. So they, Trump was just in the way, right? What they're really going after is the left when mm. they come after us, when it comes to censorship and things like that. So recognize that whenever a lot of times they try to want to shut out uh, people on the right, they're really aiming for those of us on the left when it comes to platforms like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, um, uh, oh, Reddit, different ones. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things that, this is one of the reasons why we're also on Rockfin as well, because Rockfin is uh, more... I hate to use the word liberal, but they are a more freer platform for us to be ourselves so that we don't have to contain ourselves in this, uh, oh, uh, this, whatchamacallit, this niche uh, corporate yeah. bubble that they want us to stay Corpor in. Corporate-friendly content, basically. Yeah, and because people don't live corporate-friendly lives. No kidding, right? Yeah. Uh, the corporation is actually quite unfriendly when you think about it. It is yeah. the opposite of friendly. Well, and, and it's, uh, you know, and obviously like digital rights is a big lane for me too. I talk about that a ton on my show. And, you know, this all gets into what I think we need at this point is a straight up digital bill of rights. Like we need oh, a course. digital bill of rights. Yeah. It needs to include net neutrality. It needs to include uh, municipal broadband throughout the country. So like mm -hmm. cities have their own internet infrastructure that's solid. And it needs to include how these platforms need to behave, which, mm. you know, it blows my mind when you see people, especially people that who consider themselves on the left, who are calling to allow Mark Zuckerberg and his buddies to decide what is and isn't new. It's like, like you got to take a step back. It's like, do you know what you're actually asking for? You're giving like, like, the power to them. You're giving the power to them. They have no, I mean, not only is that disturbing on many levels, and that's a power that no one entity should have. But also, you're asking them to do something they're just bogusly not qualified to do. Mm -hmm. like, 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 hey, you're a tech, you're, you're you're a tech engineer. Interpret the Constitution for for a world of people. Like, what yeah. the hell are you asking for? We have free speech laws. We have that in the United States. Other yeah. countries have their free speech laws too. We have this already. It exists. Yeah. Is it perfect? No. But is it a hell of a lot better than Mark Zuckerberg and his friends deciding what is and isn't free speech? Yes, it's way freaking better than that. So yeah. how about these platforms follow the freaking free speech laws that already exist? Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, what's so hard about that? Well, we know it's hard about yeah. that because they, they'd rather just they'd rather just pretend like, no, the solution is how will Mark Zuckerberg be happy? 
<laughs> Nobody cares about how happy an android is. <laughs> Nobody cares. Look, all right. We are one of the only countries that that doesn't have a vote or an update on our own constitution. Cuba just did it in 2019. Like, what the hell? Like, number one, we should be updating our constitution. Number one. Number two, the fact that we should have an economic and a digital bill of rights should, you know, be like a duh position. Yeah. I mean, free speech should matter online as it does out in real life. And I honestly think that, you know, these companies should be owned by the community. Oh, and, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so that we can, you know, just have these as like uh, an open uh, public square. Yeah. Because that's basically what it is. Yeah, yeah. Breaking them up, making them public utilities. That's yeah. that's totally what we got to do. Yeah, um, definitely. But in the meantime, they'll come up with policies that make the situation worse. That's <laughs> that's what they'll do in the meantime. They're like, hey, we, we have a problem in a bad situation. Let's come up with a shitty policy to make it worse. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what they've been doing. I mean, it's been doing it for the last, what, 100 year, 150 years. So actually, it's been doing it since the inception of this country. But I digress. Yeah, yeah you know. no kidding. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. people are conditioned for that. They're just like, hey, I, yeah. I, we have a problem here. Does anyone have any shitty ideas? And, and then both parties raise their hand. It's like, all right, we're going to... We're going to unironically pick one. <laughs> I got one. I got one. <laughs> uh, so for anyone just tuning in, the Fred Hampton leftists are joining Rockfin. <laughs> and I'm excited to have them on Rockfin. There's going to be some exclusive Rockfin content that they're going to have there. And uh, I'm real excited for that, man. I'm real excited for that. I, lo I love talk. Rome is a really fun guy to talk to. I love talking to that guy. Yeah, and he is. It's so cool. I mean, the dedication to mutual aid you guys have. Well, well first of all, for anyone who, who maybe is, um, you know, still um, learning in that area, how would how would you describe mutual aid? What does that mean to you? Mutual aid is a lot different than charity. Uh, charity is basically a bunch, of, a bunch of rich people who want to choose, pick and choose what they want to donate to. And then they pretty much use it as a cover to uh to make themselves look good and they barely give up themselves. They just want to basically save face in a capitalistic system because they are trying to keep the pitch force away. Mutual aid is a basically a grassroots system where people can donate not just money, but also time, resources, anything you have to help somebody out. I'll give you a, a, an example. Our friend Nick, Socialist MMA, shout out to my friend Nick. Yeah. He, as his version of mutual aid, wants to teach, uh, he wants to teach martial arts classes, especially to women, uh, for free, so that they are able to protect themselves better um, against not just dangerous people but also you know if police want to get you know rowdy with you uh if you're you know doing a a march or something like that and they want to disobey the law um and so he wants to teach us that or mutual aid could be do you know a lot a lot about computers and do you know somebody that needs work on computers cool do you know somebody who is, for instance, a podcaster and they aren't doing very well, you know, when it comes to editing and you know how to edit and you like to edit and you want to help somebody else out with that? That's cool. Do you have five bucks to help somebody with gas? That can be mutual aid. Are you, you know, good at, you know, taking care of kids and watching somebody's kids and you have a neighbor and they need their kids watched while they go to work because they have nobody to babysit because childcare is expensive. That could be mutual aid. It is communities coming together to help each other out um, because the capitalistic system requires that you always have to do it for profit. And they always say, well, people are, are selfish and they don't want to do something unless it's for money. 
people do things for solidarity too. Yeah. People aren't inherently selfish in that way. And so people like to help people out if we can. Sometimes we may have a GoFundMe or sometimes we may, uh, sometimes you have some, have somebody that knows how to fix cars and they know how to, you know, replace that, you know, blown head gasket for you that you need to, you know, get to and from where you need to go. So that's what mutual aid basically is. And, and you know, and we're trying to build up more mutual aid and encourage more mutual aid because ultimately we, we want to get to a general strike. Because with a general strike, yes. that means <laughs> that the oligarchs will lose money. Because if we're not producing or consuming, that means that they will end up just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Or which means that we will actually have more saying power and we can say, okay, tell the people who you donate to, you donate to actually bribe that we want a single payer healthcare system. Yeah. That we want a green new infrastructure deal that we want to pull out, out of every single ward that we're doing abroad, that we want to end the CIA. We want to end ice. We want to do all these different things that would actually help the proletariat. And that's what we're about. And so this is one of the reasons why we're encouraging mutual aid, because we want to foster that feeling of community so that when that general strike does come, a huge mutual aid network network is there. And then, boom, we hit the oligarchs where it hurts their that's wallets. A, and that's the thing. Like, like that's and, and I am I am a general strike stan, S-T-A-N. It's one. Of, I only stand for two things, James, love and a general strike. That's it. And, yep. uh, you know, and uh, well, I guess peace, too. But but I feel like that kind of goes into love. But, yeah, peace, love and a general strike. But yep. uh, but look, it's one of those things. I mean, to just break it down in the most simple of terms, it's like when the oligarchs feel it in their pocket, because they're the people really running this show. Wall Street runs this freaking country. The politicians are their puppets. We of know course. this. Yeah. So you hit them in their fucking pocket, which a general strike does. Then all of a sudden. They go to their puppets and they say, fix this, fix this now. And they're like, well, what do, what do you want us to do? Like, whatever it takes to fucking fix it. Mm -hmm. And then they have to come to us and they go, our masters aren't happy. Mm -hmm. What do we got to do? And that's when we say single payer now. Yeah. Green yeah. New Deal and yeah. the wars and the mm -hmm. CIA. By the way, this country is a lot like espresso. Better without ice. So get rid of them. <laughs> and that that's when I love that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude. So yeah, I, I, I am with you on a general strike 110%. And I know there's some efforts uh for that going on. I'm not familiar with all of them, but uh but if you're yeah. out there and you're listening, please get in touch with me because I'd love to learn more and have you on my show. So yeah, yeah, there's supposed to be a campaign for a general strike happening on October 15th. Yeah, I've I've um, heard about this. Uh, I, I would love for that to happen. My only my only thing that gives me pause is that we don't have a large enough mutual aid network going right now. So I I want it to happen. And the sooner the better, especially if right. we can have a general strike going on during Black Friday. Oh my God, that, that would, would be, be amazing. Awesome. Yeah, right? if we could pull off a general strike for Black Friday, that would be... That would get international attention, and that that'd be oh, yeah. huge. Yeah, and and I'm always, I mean, I'm always just like, let me know the role I can play. Like, like I'm just like, let yeah. me, because because it's like I get it. People sometimes come at me. They're like, well, you're not like you're self employed. You're you're a comedian on YouTube and stuff. And I'm like, I know. I want to be a communication vehicle. I want to help in that regard. I'll, yeah. I'll freaking I'll entertain y'all if I have to. Like whatever I have to do. Like we all have our role, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, we all have a role and it's because of mutual aid. That's why we all have a role. And, yeah. uh, you know, let me run this by you. I feel like if I had to sum up mutual aid in just one sentence, I'd be like mutual aid is what government is supposed to be about and what it Precisely. is about. like mutual Precisely. aid. It's like, because in other countries, um, you know, and I'm not saying anywhere has it perfect, nor am I implying that with better government, we still wouldn't need some mutual aid. I'm sure we still would. But other countries, it's like they kind of have systemic things in place for that. I, I mean, you can look at like England as a for instance, like mm -hmm. during the pandemic and Ireland, too. You know, mm -hmm. I would see some of my friends who lives in places like that 
they would be doing stuff like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm young and relatively healthy. So I'm involved in this program right now where I'm delivering food to more vulnerable people because there's a pandemic. So I'm I'm delivering yeah. food right now. And, and they would get, yeah. you know, letters from their mayor thanking them for their involvement, like other wow. countries. They kind of have these systems in place because wow. we're called a community for a reason. You know, it's it's like there's a One reason why we're a community. There's yeah, a reason like, why we crawled out of the trees and decided, hey, we're better off cooperating than just being all on our own. There's a reason yeah. for that. So we yeah. should maybe behave like one. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, I like to give some attention. I'm seeing some of my friends in the chat. Um, Savvy Sav says we uh, oh, hang on. Savvy. <laughs> Yeah, Savvy Sav, she, she, she's one of my uh, co-hosts on the Fred Hampton Leftist Network. But she says, yes, we need mutual aid so people can pay their rent for months because Amazon yeah. can wait us out. And Greg Bruce says, I think one of the non-negotiable demands of a general strike needs to be a job guarantee and or UBI as a contingency. In any case, they say we can just automate your jobs. So uh, I think one of the things that we also should do is a federal jobs guarantee and you can couple that with a UBI um, because the thing is, is that people need to be able to uh, have that safety net in place. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I just don't think that uh, we are we, this whole this whole uh, independent mindset. Um, oh, what's the word? Uh, it's called um, uh, in, selfishness. It's, yeah. Well, it, it's it's this uh, mindset. My brain is blanking on the word, but um, but it's basically this independent mindset. Like I don't need anybody. I'm self-made, and basically, a pick yourself up by your bootstraps type individualism. Of, basically, individ yes, yeah, exactly. I mean individualism. Individualism is inherently inhuman. Yeah, I agree. We we humans are inherently collectivist and collaborative in doing what we need to do. And I'm going to talk to some of the people who are conservatives and that may be watching. Especially some of you religious conservatives. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put something out there for you. I don't know how many of those I got, James, but go for it. Okay. And some of you who aren't, you guys can use this too. So be feel free to use this. So so to religious any religious conservatives that say this individualist mindset is the best way to go. If it wasn't if it was if it wasn't if collectivism wasn't so powerful then God would have never stopped it. What do you mean? Well, back in the day when they were building the Tower of Babel, wasn't it God was the one who actually confused all the languages? Because he said, if they continue to do and work together, there's nothing that they can do to it, they, nothing that they can't accomplish. So you, can, you guys can use that, by the way. So the thing is, is that we need to be collectivists in order it to be able to do better, right? I know it's kind of a, a thing like out of left field, but the thing is, is that collectivism works, right? And this individualistic mindset is something that actually, you know, takes us back. And so for us to sit here and go, Oh, you just got to depend on yourself. Nobody depends on themselves. Right. It is inherently inhumane for us. Like, for instance, if all we had to do was depend on ourselves, then we would be able to stand on our own hind legs at, you know, four hours old. Right. We don't. <laughs> we don't. So, you know, we have to depend on one another. You totally, know, the key man. word in socialism is social. The key word in communism is community. Yeah. So, I mean, this whole capitalistic mindset, which depends on just capital money. Right. I was going to say the key word there is capital. Which yeah. one do you think is better for a society? Which one do yeah. you think will allow a society to thrive? Capital, yeah. community mm -hmm. or social? This is not I mean, it really is in many ways that simple. And we're taught all these. I mean, it's amazing. The, the pretzel logic that is imposed upon us. 
as you know people in the contemporary united states the 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 way they polish the turd that is capitalism associating <laughs> these things that have nothing to do with it and, and even like individualism like we're taught we're not taught what individualism actually is which is just yeah. i'm gonna take mine and go fuck yourself that's really yeah. at the end of the day what it is what we're yeah. taught instead is that oh well it means like you think for yourself and blah blah, blah. like no that has nothing to do with it and being yeah. a community member does not mean that you don't have independent thought that you're not it means you're an individual within the herd who has an obligation to the herd and we all do and it's actually yeah. what we bring to the table as individuals that makes the herd better it's the fact that yeah. we can say hey i can teach mma classes hey i can i can tell you jokes hey i can grow potatoes hey i can you know that's yeah. what it means that's yeah. what it's all about yeah it's just like one of my favorite sayings that i came up with don't give me a pile of shit, put sprinkles on it and call it chocolate ice cream. Like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> you know, I hate it know when that happens. Yeah, I hate I it hate, when that happens. I do Darn not go back. You. To that. I never go this back to that. Chocolate ice cream. <laughs> I never go back to that establishment. I used to I used to occasionally get uh ice cream at Duopoly dips. And uh, I would go there and and all too often I was like, this is this is shit. This is this is this is supposed to be chocolate ice cream and it's shit. And they're like, oh, OK, well, the other one is, is like totally shit. And we just don't tell you it's chocolate ice cream. It's like, oh, so so it's just they're both shit flavors. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah we gave you the lesser one because there's there's whipped cream on it. If you look hard enough, I'm like, this is. <laughs> This is, I am not coming back to this establishment and I am giving it a zero star Yelp review. And they're like, well, fuck yeah. off, you purist. And I, but I've not gone back there, James. I have not gotten my ice cream there since. <laughs> yes, you purist. <laughs> God, damn you for having standards. <laughs> right? You know? Yeah. We're going to fight for Medicare for all. Okay. Come out to the march and support us. Oh no, you guys can't do that. You're you're purists. <laughs> like you can't do it that way. You can't you can't do it. You have to do yeah. it. <laughs> you have to do yeah. it like well, we can't do this. We can't pressure your favorite politicians. We can't yeah. have a march. We can't have a general strike. We yeah. can't force a vote. What can we do? What can we do? I'm waiting for these better ideas. I yeah. really want to hear them. And, yeah. and, you know, uh, sometimes I actually get people trying to answer that question and, and they send me all these things like, like, you just need to start an email list. If you just, if you just start an email list, it'll just be, everybody's just going to be like, yeah. Yeah, just start an email list, man. That's I'm all not even do. It's just start an email list and get people to get, it's like, um, did, did MLK start an email list? <laughs> Did the suffragettes start an email list? Wait. You know, I bet, I bet he would have, and it might not have been his finest thing. I, I bet it would have been like, dude, not. these emails I mean, are way too fucking long, buddy. The letter They're from just... Birmingham the letter from Birmingham Ham Jail was pretty good, but that was pretty solid. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, no. He had a lot of solid stuff. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm yeah. just saying. I wouldn't have yeah. wanted him spending too much time in front of a computer. Yeah. I mean, did Marsha P. Johnson send an email? No, she shouldn't have she shouldn't have brick. Okay. That's what she sent. Uh, so yeah, direct action. I think that's gonna actually work a little bit better. Why? Because it's direct. Yeah. Well put. Well put. Direct it's action. Direct. It's kind of direct. Yeah. Uh, it's, have you tried the indirect stuff? Yeah. Have you, you tried? Have you tried working behind the scenes for the last forty fucking years? We have. <laughs> Are you did you still, did you read theory? Did, did, you mean all you that all that Marx? stuff that all that like, stuff that advocates direct action? Have what I read the hell that? Do I need to read Marx for? I'm living this shit. I, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. And, like, and by the okay, way, I'm gonna say this. I I want to because I actually want to get the the you know the other side of it. You know the more uh, educational side of it. Of course, yeah, I want to, but I don't necessarily have to because. I came to be a socialist without ever having to read theory. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to because I know what's going on out there. I live in the hood. I know what's going on out there. And so I know that capitalism doesn't work because I was able to come to that conclusion by listening to other people and coming to it on my own. 
Well, I've I have read Mark. I mean, I haven't read all of it because uh, Capital is very, very huge. But but I've but I've read some Marx and I've read right. Rules for Radicals and I've read Anatomy of a Revolution and and I've read I've actually read a lot of these books because I I went to grad school. Whatever. Um, mm -hmm. None of them say, "Don't disrupt the system." <laughs> Yeah. None of them say that. None of them. They all, I, I've read the anarchist cookbook. Uh, they all advocate for direct action. They all advocate for mutual aid. They don't necessarily put it in that lingo because these books were written a long time ago, some of them. But they mm -hmm. all advocate for all those things. Direct yeah. action, working class solidarity, mutual aid, community involvement, uh, having basic needs met. I mean, Paulo Freire breaks this down where it's like you can't do anything unless basic needs are met. You can't learn if you're hungry. You can't learn if you're unhoused. So it's, you have a catastrophe if those needs are unmet, which by the way, gets us to something going on contemporarily we were gonna talk about. Yep. So so yeah, I mean, this whole like, like hiding under this idea of pragmatism, there's nothing pragmatic when you're dealing with catastrophe and you're saying, let's just take a baby step. That's not pragmatic. That's delusional, motherfucker. That's delusional. Sometimes you got to flip a table over to get results. Yeah. Who did that? The big JC, right? Jesus did that. Oh, That's the only I time you ever right got there. pissed off. I see it right there. I was even going to go there. I was going to go with somebody else, but hey. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you got to flip a table over. I mean, I see Medea do it in a play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude. But yeah, so I mean, the thing is that you want results. Sometimes saying please is not the way to get it. Sorry. It, 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 and, and here's the thing. A lot of people right now, like we will critique their favorite politicians. And then a lot of times they'll say, well, you guys can't attack them. You guys got to be civil. And this is one of my things. I'm like, civility went out the fucking window on Friday when they decided to adjourn. And now we just have performative people out on the steps of the Capitol trying to say they're trying to get them to reconvene when they've actually known for over a month that this moratorium was going to end. You've known for yeah. So, so for anyone who's who's not in the know of what of what we're talking about right now, yeah. the the eviction moratorium ended. They knew this was coming. They did nothing, and now there are some folks outside on the steps of the Capitol. Now, I don't know. Like, let me get your take on this. I, whether it's performative on behalf of the politicians or not, I'm still glad it's happening because I can say that the activists there and the journalists there. They ain't being performative. Yeah. They're there for action. Yeah. So yeah. so what's going on in the minds of the politicians? I don't know. I'm not a mind reader. To be honest, I personally don't really care because there's people out there calling the bluff. And yeah. that's what matters most. Yeah. I mean, I don't so, know. What do you think? I'm I'm cool with it happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm fine with that. I just wish it happened a week ago. Oh, totally. Oh, no, no, no. I, I mean, you know, yeah, it sucks that it, it it waited until this point. I'm glad it's happening as opposed to nothing. Yeah. So, and, and and I applaud the people who are in solidarity who are there, and they're demanding answers yeah. from elected officials. Yeah. So uh, Kobe Azale, he asked a question at the Medicare for All march of um, Corey Bush. You had Franco from Frank Analysis um, that was out there. Um, and uh, Max Blumenthal that actually asked the night before about force to vote. Um, so, you know, they were asking AOC and Corey Bush about their thoughts and why are we, they doing these things late? But at the same time, I'm glad that they're out there because now is giving attention to it so that they could re reconvene. But I just hope that it's, not so late that one person gets kicked out of their home, but it sure. might happen. Absolutely. And Absolutely. That's what I didn't want to happen. Absolutely. You know, Cause I I've been evicted before I've made so little to the point where my first apartment that I've ever gotten, I moved out when I was 18. By the time I was about to turn 19, I was, I was experiencing my first eviction, you know? So this, this system is, is cruel. 
um, because I just didn't make enough. And I've been homeless. And just because you're not out on the street doesn't make you uh, not homeless. Because if you're sleeping in a motel, if you have to live in a motel, you're still homeless. If you have to couch surf, you're still homeless. So I've been in that position before a couple of times, actually. So uh, people shouldn't have to go through this. And the fact that uh, they are, you know, uh, and, and I'm talking about all of Congress just sitting on their hands and allowing this to happen because the CDC put in an eviction moratorium, you know, right. a month ago and they knew that we all knew that and they just sat on their hands and allowed it to end so they can go on on August recess. And I think it's quite typical for them to do an August recess if I'm correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I believe. Well, they, they get, they get so much vacation time. It's, it's disgusting. Yeah, um, they get I, vacation time like Europeans. Yeah. Yeah. And they if they were really doing their jobs, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't. I mean, hey, it, it's not an easy gig. Take your <laughs> vacation time if you were yeah, actually definitely. doing your job for the people. But, you know, you instead have these huge upward transfers of wealth during a pandemic and leave the people to, to go fuck themselves. No, mm -hmm. no, no, this yeah. is unacceptable. And, and and, you know, I. Well, here, let's go to this is from Lee Camp's website. So Lee is one okay. of the folks in D.C. who's out there breaking Cory Bush and others. They will not leave the steps of Congress until the eviction moratorium is renewed. It's time to expand the demands. So here are some tweets from from Cory Bush. Okay. Okay. Uh, some folks from the People's Parties are out there. Join the actions on the steps of Congress today. Um, Jamal Bowman headed out there. And uh, so I'm glad that now there is a movement around it. And okay. that for a change, we do have some elected officials that are there, too, because, yes. you know, my attitude towards electoralism is as such. Electoralism is a necessary tool. Unfortunately, I wish it wasn't, but it's a necessary tool in the toolkit of change. It is a tool that we often overamplify. I'm guilty of doing that myself, and I try really hard not to. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it is an yeah. overamplified tool. But it is a necessary tool. It's not as big as we make it out to be. And that's yeah. actually a good thing. But it is a necessary tool. So the fact that now they're on the ground with people, that is a good thing. Uh, at least mm -hmm. I think that is a good thing. And, and I'm really hoping that, <clears throat> you know, that they reconvene. Yeah. Um, I hope that it pushes it. But I'm not mm. holding my breath. Well, I'm not either. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm totally so, not either. And, yeah. But I applaud the people I, I hate that you are sound out so there. negative. But the thing is, is that I've been seeing what's been going on for the last couple of years, and it's just like the hope has just gone out the window. And I'm just like, Ugh. I don't, like, I don't think you're being negative because when when it is um when it's just performative stunt after performative stunt, and that's the best we can hope for. Yeah. Um, you're being, I would say, reasonably cautious. I, I don't I'm think that's the be. same as negativity. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and I'm it, being reasonably cautious too, but I'm saying like, you know, the the bluff has been called basically. Yeah. And basically, us, you know, mm -hmm. the activists have legitimized it. Whatever it started as, wh whether it was just a performative action or not, it doesn't matter because it's been legitimized by the activists who are there now. Yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a uh, hashtag going around called Occupy Congress. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go, but I'm kind of hoping that a whole slew of people go out there and just join them. Yeah. I, I it, Look, if you guys are going to do that, we're going to make this a real thing. So a whole bunch of activists come out there with their sleeping bags and say, okay, you guys aren't going to leave. We're not going to leave. We're going to stay here too. And then you have the entire national mall just filled with people sleeping out on, on, on the grass and saying, have you guys lifted that moratorium yet? Have you guys actually canceled people's rent and mortgages yet? Are you guys giving $2,000 survival checks to people so that they can stay home so we can get over this pandemic yet? If not, then we're staying out here and we're not leaving. In fact, we're going to get a bunch of porta potties out here and we're going to let it stay out here until something gets done. And maybe, just maybe, 
this could be a start of a general strike maybe maybe Dude. this can spark something now i'm getting it, now, now you're making me excited now <laughs> now i'm now i'm getting uh the most action yeah you get some action weird, online today that right weird? i'm getting a little i'm getting a little like tingle in my that's called hope i'm getting the hope tingle but it's a real hope tingle see i ain't obama i'm not about to give you that false hope <laughs> That's right. I'm not about to let you. I'm not about to warm up your oven and not put anything in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I got the Fauntleroy hope going on here. Oh, that's the legitimate stuff. Fauntleroyed up in here now. <laughs> coast to coast, baby. You're coming at me from Florida. I'm in Los Angeles, and we are winding it up. <laughs> yeah, we're making the hope connection. Yo, don't get me started, because if I get started, the next thing you know, you're going to get completely demonetized on YouTube. Everybody in the chat is going to be like, oh, my God, you guys are a bunch of you guys are a bunch of circus freaks. What the hell is the matter with you? And next thing you know, <laughs> we're banned from Twitter. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep I my think, mouth shut. I think the people who watch my show know I'm a circus freak, and they appreciate it. I you feel guys like, are beautiful. I feel like at this point, I, I feel like everyone, they're just like – yeah, Ron, he might, if you bring up punk rock or cats, he's going to go off for 20 minutes, but then he'll get back to it. That's just okay. what he does. <laughs> cool. Cats and punk rock are cool. So, I mean, I don't, I don't blame you. Appreciated. Um, I'm looking at your, I'm looking at the chat right now, and I'm loving the people who are viewing your channel right now. Oh, uh, thanks. Pr Pr Terry says, what would it mean if we still made sure you weren't homeless? You know, it, 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 it's just like, they asked these questions on Twitter and was just like, oh, well, that, oh it would be don't. nice if you guys actually had power and you guys were in Congress can actually make stuff happen. Well, I've been very vocal that one thing I do, I unfollow. I do not follow any politicians. I, mm -hmm. I refuse to follow any of them mm -hmm. um, because yeah. of that. I have named them the, and, and it's all of them. It's not just like any one person. It's all of them. Mm -hmm. I refer to them as the Ministry of Appeasement. Because, yeah, they tweet this bold, like, what would, insert thing I'm not actually fighting for, do for you and your family? <laughs> you know what it would do for me and my family? What are you doing to make it a reality? And I'm so tired. They should not have any likes on any of their tweets. They should not have any retweets. They should just have a ratio of people going, cool, what are you doing about it? And they should have a zero follower count. And, like, and, and I, I know that, like, yeah, Twitter is not real life. People love to say that. And I do think that's true. But... If that actually happened and that and they were just like, yeah, none of us have any followers on social media, that would really be a, a true powerful timestamp of public opinion where it's like people yeah. are fed up and they're seeing through your facade and they're not yeah. tolerating it anymore. And whenever you log into your Twitter account, you're not feeling good with likes and retweets and thank you where you want to go do a stream next. You're logging into a big headache ratio of people calling you out because you are a public, you are a public official. You are supposed to be serving the public good. You're serving yeah. the opposite and yeah. we're done with it. And your nice tweets aren't going to fucking cut it. If that's what you actually stand for, you should be using the leverage you have. No, nobody. And, and that's the other thing too. Nobody is asking. I mean, if you look at the list of demands that they had for AOCs when they went to, to her office, Mm -hmm. Nobody is asking anything outside of the power that these elected officials have. Nobody's asking for anything they can't do. These are all fair, reasonable requests. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even look at the interview between Crystal Ball and Bernie Sanders. I haven't seen it, but what, what oh. happened? Was it good? Ron? Dad? Mm-hmm. Mm. Was it in between? Scale of 1 to 10. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being bad and 10 being really good, Bernie did about a 3. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, I haven't seen it, so I'm, I'm just taking your word for it. But but, but yeah. so what, what, why did you bring it up? Like, what happened? So, so the thing is that uh, Bernie, you know, during the campaign trail said that, you know, if – uh, if he were, if he had the bully pulpit, then he would uh, literally campaign against Joe Manchin, even in his district, in order to get things like single payer health care or a $15 minimum wage passed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, right now, Joe Biden is not doing that because he doesn't really want to do it. Why isn't Bernie 
uh, basically calling out Joe Biden and say, you promised me on the campaign trail that we were going to get $15 minimum wage passed. Why aren't you doing it? Right. You know what I mean? We're in the middle of a pandemic. In Section 1881A of the Social Security Act, uh, the president of the United yes. States can, in fact, uh, enact Medicare for all across the board during an emergency, which we are in. Why isn't Bernie Sanders bringing that up? Because it's definitely within the power of Joe Biden. Joe Biden also has the power to take medic. Uh, I'm sorry, um, marijuana off as a schedule one drug and decriminalize it at least, but yeah. he refuses to do that. Um, he also has the power to cancel everyone's student loan debt. He has the power to do that, and but he refuses. And then Bernie is not fighting for it. And Bernie waffled on the, the questions that Crystal Ball was giving him. Might I remind you, to me, Crystal Ball should actually should have went harder on Bernie and Crystal Ball didn't because they still want that access. I would have said, uh, you didn't do any of these things. Why aren't you doing them? And if he would have said that, Bernie, why are you lying to me? Don't lie to me, Bernie. I would have told him that because you, you even said this stuff yourself. I'm not stupid. I'm a voter and I can read. This is the actual stuff that's within the, the purview of uh, that is within the legal right of the presidency. And the thing is, you cannot tell me shit about what Biden can't do when all those executive orders were being done by Trump. And it was still legal and they were still able to be held in place. The only reason why they're not in place was because Joe Biden repealed them. But that's it. So. And by know, the way, he was being applauded when he was doing that. When he when he like unraveled some of the and, and you know, there were some terrible things that Trump did and, and Joe yeah. Biden reversed some things. People were happy yeah. about that. They were applauding him for yeah. it. When he did Keystone XL, people were which, by the way, I was too. I, I was thrilled to see Keystone XL. Mm -hmm. But I'm also saying, what about line three? The work's not done. You know, I, I mean, so, yeah, there's so much more he can still do. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's the thing. Like, those are the questions they do not want to be asked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so my thing is, is that, look, I respect Bernie for what he did. And I'll say this. I said it before and I'll say it again. Bernie is like a parent that is teaching you how to ride your bike. And he has his hand on the back seat and he's pushing you. And as he's pushing you, you start pedaling. And then you get to a point where you start pedaling on your own and you end up leaving your parent behind. Thing is, you're grateful for what they did. But right now you have grown past them. You are beyond that. And the thing is that the left has grown beyond Bernie. The thing is, is that a lot of times we now have to hold Bernie's feet to the fire because he is a politician. Right. We should not have favorite politicians because they are our employees. Thing is, Bernie is your employee. The squad, Mark Pocan, uh, Pramila Jayapal, Ro Khanna, they are your employees. And if they said that they're actually for this, but they're not actually fighting for it, because there's a difference between supporting something yeah. and fighting for it. If you're not fighting for it, then what do we have you for? Bingo. 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 This is what you campaigned on. This is who your base is. And all we're asking is for you to deliver. We're asking for we you to deliver. deliver. We're asking. And that's the thing. People want to get the cart before the horse in some cases because they're like, well, what about Joe Manchin? He's terrible. What about? Yeah, he is. But here's the thing. We got to get our house in order first. Yeah. Because these are our policy demands. This is what the country yeah. needs. And the people who are supposed to be fighting for that, for us, they're not. Once they are, then we go to Joe Manchin. That's how it works. You get people on board with the action you, you need first. And then you go to the other people who you know don't want to support it. Uh, I want to say this. Um. I don't care if they fail while fighting. Of course. As long as they fight. That's yeah. all we're asking for. That's all we're asking. Fail. If you fail, fail better. Right? Uh, I think Dr. Cornell West was, was quoting that. Fail. Fail again. Fail better. Fail again another time. Fail better. Until you succeed. And the thing is, is that just like, for instance, the, the suffragettes, they failed the first time. 
but they failed better and they, they won. We failed, you know, as far as the, uh, the civil rights era, we failed, but then we failed better. And the next thing you know, guess what? I'm not a second class citizen anymore or considered a second class citizen by the social, the, the social aspect, but you know, systemically i still yeah, kind of am yeah it's so funny but, it's so but you funny know what i mean these, no I know, I know what you mean it, it's so funny these these just whenever you are operating out of fear you are going to lose 100 mm -hmm. of the time that's just yes. how life works and so all it these is. people who are like well it's not gonna it, it, it probably wouldn't pass we don't have to but we don't it's like yeah we have to try we have to take a fucking swing so then we can take a swing again that's how it has always happened that's how it yeah. has always happened. Over you in England, failed. the NHS was voted down 10 times before it freaking passed. You know, yeah. the, the program they got in Massachusetts, which is, you know, it's Romney care, but even still, it failed a bunch of times before it got through. Yeah. You know, in Canada, they started with one province and then it went to the rest of the country. Yeah. Here in California, our public bank movement, it failed at the ballot box the first time, but then there was another initiative and now we're going to be able to make 10 public banks in California. Wow. You don't you don't get a W right away, especially yeah. when you're fighting the system because they have the money and they have the power and you don't. You have each other. That's what we have. We have people. That's all we have. That's a lot. But yep. that doesn't mean we're not going to take our losses. We are going to take our losses. But you know what guarantees you a loss? Not showing up on the fucking field. That yeah. guarantees you a loss. So you all these people where their strategy is not getting on the field. They're not giving you good advice. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is just a fucking game to them. And maybe yeah. this is just all about access and looking cool on social media to them. Mm -hmm. If you take a bunch of L's, you can create a W. That's the truth, man. That's the truth. Um, yeah. So uh, do you want to go through some super chats with me? Sure. Let's go. Awesome, buddy. So, uh, Edwin, what's up, pal? Good to see you, buddy. Liking the Sunday show, Ron. Love the Fred Hampton leftist. I will sub at Rockfin. So have you guys uh, – thank you for that, Edwin, first of all. But uh, so have you guys officially launched, or is there like an official launch date? Uh, we are, are currently uploading some of our content right now. We're moving some stuff from uh, YouTube over to Rockfin. Uh, we're also uh, going to be uh, doing – our shows and live streaming on Rockfin. I'm going to try to do it today for my 4 p.m. show. Nice. Um, and try to do my first show on Rockfin. Um, but yeah, we're trying to do that as well. Uh, and we're going to be uploading directly to there as well from now on. So like when you when you see the, uh, the roundtables that we typically do on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, you're also going to be able to catch that on Rockfin as well. So, so you guys, you guys are there. You guys are present. Are. Your profile is there. Yes, so we are. I gotta, we gotta follow each other. Yes, definitely, because awesome. we already follow you. Oh, you do? Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> all right. Well, we, as gotta, soon we, as... gotta, we gotta follow Ron Pocone. Like, Aww. come on. Of course. All right. Well, as soon as this stream is over, because I'm, I'm streaming on Rockfin right now, but as soon as the stream's over, I'm following you back. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate of that. course, mm -hmm. of course. Um. So thank you for that, Edwin, and y'all don't wait. Uh, follow them now. Follow the Fred Hampton Leftist on uh, Rockfin now. Um, Megan, what's up? Megan Morales, have not seen you in a while. I hope you are doing well. Uh, I love your comment here too. Dr. Richard Wolf clarified it for me by differentiating between individualism mm -hmm. versus individuality. Mm -hmm. I love dr richard wolf and i'm so not surprised that he had a more eloquent way of framing things than i did that is often the case and that is same, so cool i love that same z's man because dr richard wolf is like one of the people who i look up to and yeah he could he can uh out talk me you know in circles so he's, I, a, I'm, he's a brilliant dude and and yeah that is yeah. one that i don't actually like follow a ton of podcasts but mm -hmm. that is one I follow a lot. I follow I, I follow Economic Update, and sometimes oh, yeah. sometimes I'll just listen to the first half. Like I'll just listen to his his lesson, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's basically it's just like an economic lesson every week, and a damn good one. 
Like yeah. it, it's just you, like you, it's a free education. Like that podcast is literally just a free education. Yeah. And I love it because like, for instance, Dr. Richard Wolf is a, he's a much needed voice on the left. He's a, he's a sage voice on the left that we have to listen to ones like him. And I, I love, I'm reading, uh, the deficit myth by Dr. Stephanie Kilton. Mm -hmm. um, I like what she has to say. Uh, I also want to get into more different uh, voices on the left as well uh, that are are that are older that have been around the block, so to speak, so that uh, I can learn from the past of what they did and learn from the mistakes and how we can do better. And I also want to learn from their victories and see how we can copy those. Well, if you want a recommendation, I recommend the updated Anarchist Cookbook. Because okay. they, they updated it. And, and you can probably get the most recent just from a library or, or just buy it even. Um, and, you know, Keith McHenry, who, you know, organizes Food Not Bombs. He, he's been on my show before. I'm, I'm sure he'd be thrilled to come on your guys' show. He's a really fun interview, really fun guy to talk to. Um, okay. I, I love talking to him. And, uh, and he, um, he really breaks it down. I mean, that, okay. that, cause and that, that book has always been about just breaking it down and what it really means to, to, to do direct action in the United States. And, um, you know, he's, he's been doing it a long time and they've had some wins. They've had some losses like everyone else. And, yeah. and, and that the new update, I mean, it really, I mean, it was just an eye opening book. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, I just looked it up on, on the Google machine. And as soon as I get some extra money, cause I'm poor as hell, <laughs> I'm going to try to get the anarchist cookbook. Cause that sounds really, really cool. So it's, it's I, really cool. Yeah. 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 It's really yeah. cool. And, and I, I mean, you know, if you want to just, if you use, do you use Libby? I never heard of it before. So Libby is like a, it's, it's a library app. Oh, okay. And it, oh, I, I use it religiously, especially during the pandemic, because like you couldn't physically go to the library. I'm that guy, James. Everyone at the library says hello to me because they see my ass around so much. Uh, that, that was what a pre-pandemic. I was, uh, you know, I was that guy for for a long, long time. Um, yeah. Now I live in a different neighborhood, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be that guy again eventually. But uh, but I use my Libby app uh, very religiously, and you can get the most recent anarchist cookbook like on Libby too if you want to just like start diving into it right away okay i'll, I'll look into that l-i-b-b-y -B -B libby yeah. okay yeah. Okay. oh yeah great app man great right. app nice. uh so thank you for that megan thank you very much and, and yeah dr dr richard wolf's po podcast is uh is very cool um mm -hmm. black freud what's up thank you for the super chat contribution bernie please retire thanks for the memories i want to refund <laughs> my campaign donations <laughs> <laughs> you know my uh oh and some people are asking so i'll answer real quick uh yes uh libby is free um you know my thing with bernie uh, yeah he's a politician and the one thing he did that i will always be thankful for no matter what ever happens i like to say it's like, like your analogy of the uh you know the parent helping you on the training wheels that's a damn good one the analogy i like to use too bernie's like a flashlight and what happened five ish years ago was a lot of us who are, you know, lefties in this country, we kind of felt like there aren't that many of us. Well, there aren't, but we really felt like there aren't that many of us. We just live in a country where we're, you know, politically outcast big time. And then Bernie shined a big fucking flashlight and showed us, because he was just in the right place at the right time, that there's more of us than we realize are we still yeah. small apps of fucking lootly we're still small don't get me wrong yeah but there's more of us than we realize and there's also more people who aren't quite there yet but they get the problems mm -hmm. you know like they really they get what's going on in this country and they want just better community programs and they don't want an economy of war that that's most people in this yeah. freaking country yeah, they see how they're getting screwed over. Yeah. So it showed us that there are more leftists than we realize. There are more people open to progressive policies than we realize. And there's more people who see the problems 
And, you know, if they, if we can break through the clutter of this idea that they think the, you know, they think that the left means the Democratic Party, which is a bunch of just elite bourgeoisie telling them they're stupid. If we yeah. can break through that clutter and make them realize, no, these are just policies that would make your life a lot better, mm -hmm. you know, we can really be a force to be reckoned with. Okay. And, you know, that's what Bernie did. At the end of the day, that's what we really gained from all of this. Are we yeah. still very small? Yeah, but we're not as small as I thought we were. You know, I've always said being a lefty in the United States is like being a surfer in Nebraska and your only way to the ocean is walking. And I think in many ways that is still true. Mm -hmm. But what I'm pleasantly surprised by, there's more people who want to take the walk with me. And maybe yeah. if we're all walking together, you know, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're yeah, going to get there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and one thing I think I've learned is that when you go issue for issue with people, you can, you can leave all of the leftist lingo out and you go mm -hmm. issue for issue then people will say, well, yeah, I mean, your health care shouldn't be tied to your job. That's like a duh position. Or, yeah, I mean, we do have climate change. I mean, you know, uh, having a mass public transit would be great. Or, yeah, no, I don't want, you know, the government spying on me and taking my rights away. When you start to go issue for issue, it's like, wait a minute. A lot of people are more further to the left than they think they are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's the thing. And, and it's because we're just, uh, everybody, you know, th there's just that, like, stigma in the corporate media that says that that's not what it is. Mm -hmm. But a, a lot of people, and, that, and that's one thing, you know, again, to his credit, that's one thing. I mean, Bernie was going into the heartland, and yeah. he was getting standing ovations of people like, yeah, everyone should have health care. You know, yeah. and, and the whole like socialized medicine propaganda, it was it's not working the way it used to. Okay. It's not yeah. working the way it used to. People are yeah. seeing through that bullshit and they're going, no, we're the richest country in the world. Other countries figured this out years ago. We need universal health care here. Nobody yeah. should go bankrupt because of medical bills. Are you nuts? And, and, and that's starting to really take root, man. And, and, it, and it's up to us to really keep it going. Luis, you say this. Uh, I want my money back from Justice Dems, Bernie, Ilhan, Corey, et cetera, so I can re-gift it to independent media. <laughs> Thank you, Luis. You know, yeah. and, and I'll say this on the topic. This is my personal, like, way I do things. And I'm not saying that you have to follow what I do or that my way is, is better than anyone else's. This is just me personally. Yeah, sure. I do not give money or bandwidth to any politicians, unless it's at the local level, that's the only exception I'll make is local. Um, and I only give money and bandwidth. And when I say bandwidth, I mean like um, canvassing or uh, direct action, like um, uh, campaigns or what have you. Mm -hmm. I only give bandwidth to causes. Yeah. I will only give bandwidth to, you know, like, like one of the organizations I, I will give money and bandwidth to is a digital rights organization called Fight for the Future. Um, you know, or, or uh, you know, I, I so that's how I do things. And, and you know, during the pandemic, when we were raising money for, for different organizations, we never raised money for uh, a politician. We raised money for bail funds. You know, like, like when the protests were really heating up, we, we raised money for bail funds. We raised money for, um, you know, some mutual aid efforts, like some of the mutual aid efforts in my community. When, when I have something to give, I like to give it to them, um, yeah. you know, and same with bandwidth. Like I, I text the activists in my community and I'm like, anything I can help with, let me know where can I be and when, how can I help you? And, and if it means having some of, you know, the local activists or people running for local office on my show, I'm, I'm happy to do that too. Um, that's my personal rule of thumb. And I find that works for me. I mm -hmm. feel better about myself and using my resources that way. Yeah. Uh, whereas when you give it to someone in the political arena, you have no control over when they stop. You have no control over what they do exactly. You have no control over if they were to take your money and give it to entities you don't want to see it given to. 
Uh, so that's why for me, I find more fulfillment in doing other things where I know that my money is going to something noble, where I know that I'm doing my best as a community member. And these are causes that I really care about. And it's about a cause, not about a candidate. A candidate yeah. can turn their back on you. A cause mm -hmm. can't because yeah. the cause is the freaking cause. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I'm pretty much with you, man. I mean, there are some people who are local that I, you know, have looked at and I'm like, wow, they they really walk the walk. Like um, one of the people who I like that's local is Shama Sawant out right. in Seattle. Well, she shows uh, what you can do on a city council. Yeah. You know, I mean, she it's like a lot of people, you know, and I've tweeted about this before. Um, I get so many inquiries and I'm sure Fred Hampton left us. Y'all do, too of everybody and their mother running for office and 0.1% of the time, it is someone running for a local office. Mm -hmm. And it's like local is, I mean, you could do so much if you just take back your freaking city. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could do so much. If you take, if you have a city council that truly reflects the people, you can yeah. do so freaking much, but it's not yeah. quite as sexy as, hey, I'm running for Congress. I'm running for Senate. It's not as sexy as that. I get it. But when you get in there, it can be really freaking sexy. Because, mm -hmm. And I'm not saying corruption doesn't happen in local politics. It does. Of course it does. There's a lot of yeah. just real estate developer assholes that are in local politics. But why are they there? Because they realize the power that they have. That's why they're there. Local is so dope, y'all. Yeah. Anyway, you were saying, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just, uh, no, yeah. no, it's cool. No, yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, you, you realize that, you know, they can do certain things to, uh, to just directly affect, you know, the betterment of your life. Um, you know, and I interviewed, um, Nino Erba, who, who is, uh, running for mayor for Dubuque, Iowa. Uh, he has some really great um, policies, you know, in his platform. Uh, he's non, it's a nonpartisan mayoral candidate. Um, and you have, for instance, like for, uh, India Walton, I think her name is. She is a socialist. That's the that person ran. Buffalo, yeah. right? Yeah, in Buffalo. And now yeah. they're trying to take they're away. Trying to the eliminate the mayorship. <laughs> It's like trying to eliminate trying to the eliminate position, the, the, the seat of mayor because she won. <laughs> so ridiculous. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You're trying to <laughs> take away the seat because she won because the people actually voted for her. Isn't it remarkable? Is it that so sounds remarkable. very fascistic. Just a little bit, huh? Just, just a, a little. Oh just wait, a, a person, a person of the people won. Well, we, we can't, man. We we can't we can't have a coup in our own country, at least not directly. Let's just eliminate the mayor's seat. <laughs> this is a, let's just take the seat away. A bunch of assholes. Oh my gosh! So like, it's like I mean, you gotta laugh about it because you'll you'll go nuts otherwise. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Gosh, I, I, <laughs> I, you know, it's a, it takes a lot to make me speechless because I can talk a lot. And that did that. Right. Just did. I was just like, oh, you guys are disgusting. You got to be. I can't believe you to take the seat away from, just because she is a she's a, a declared socialist. And you guys are like, oh, we just got to take that seat away. <laughs> and this and this goes in and this goes into you know the whole thing about our country not or well, I should say our government not wanting other countries to be able to self determine themselves right because like for instance um if you have a country like say Chile that wants to self determine themselves and they want to be social socialist then okay, let them be socialist. Let them self-determine by means of their people. Because if socialism actually doesn't work, then you just let it implode on its own. Same thing with Cuba. 
You guys don't think communist works? Okay, then let it implode in its own. Why are you guys putting your thumb on the scale? Hmm. Why? And so the thing is, is that it, it just it just doesn't make any sense. Let the people decide their own government. Let the people decide in Buffalo if they yeah. actually want a socialist to be a mayor. Then let them decide that on their own. Why are you guys taking their power away from them? Look at you advocating for crazy things like democracy. Oh, crazy Look democracy. At you. Ah, you, you, you know. Curious. Uh, Luis goes on to say, my, my, <laughs> you <purist. laughs> my, my uh, conversation with Cory Bush at the D.C. March was eye opening. How my Jimmy door showed on two LOL local candidates only here too now. I feel you. Uh, Tepid, thank you very much. You give us a hundred percent with a microphone. Thank you so much for that. And uh, independent left. What's up? Thank you so much. Hook and run up for August. Thank you so much. Love Jay and the Fred Hampton leftists and everyone. Thanks for supporting the Mark la March last week. And being champions for everything on the left. Proud to amplify all of your work. Thank you, Independent Left. And you mentioned... Indy Love! Yeah, Indy yeah. Love! I'll walk with Ron from Nebraska. Thank you for that. It's all just uh, oh. all just a walk from Nebraska, folks. That's yeah. <laughs> that's just what it walk. is. Bring, you, bring, your shoe, bring your sneakers. That's all. Yeah. Bring your sneakers. We're in this and, together. And, and, and bring a little baby powder so you won't chafe. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just not the asbestos kind. Be careful. Just not the asbestos. Mm -mm, no. Mm -mm. James, uh, where can people go? Uh, give everyone a reminder one more time uh, before we dismount here. Where can people go to find everything Fred Hampton left this on all the platforms and everything you've got going on? Okay. So, Bow, you. <laughs> that was my uh, Kevin Hart impersonation. But <laughs> if you if you guys want, you can follow us on Fred Hampton uh left on twitter uh you can find us on youtube at fred hampton leftist same thing on rockfin we're on kofi uh ko-fi buy us a coffee it's uh ko-fi how are you liking that it's a lot better it's oh, just really? a lot better okay. yeah it's okay better. cool um uh what should we call it uh we still do uh, Patreon, but Patreon takes a little bit more off the top every single time okay. versus Kofi just does it like once a month and it's a lot cheaper and we actually get more of what our patrons give us than getting it to these platforms that want to take it off the top. So it's actually better for us, but it's Kofi.com uh, forward slash FHL network. Uh, so you can find us on there, uh, or you can just put in the search bar. I think Fred Hampton Leftist Network, um, and then you guys can follow me at JB Font at J A Y B E F A U N T, as you guys can see right there. Um, and yeah, so just uh, I'll see you guys on the Twitter webs, and we're also on. Ah, we're on Twitch. We're on um, Instagram. We're on TikTok, so yeah, we're 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 everywhere now. So nice, yeah. We'll, well be a, we'll be in your home too soon. We're coming we'll in your cooking. home. Yeah, we're gonna be cooking food and we're gonna be feeding your dog and nice. Yeah, we'll be nice. ironing. We'll be ironing your shirts too, probably. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, dude, thank you so much yeah. for coming on today. Thank you for sharing this special thank announcement you, here. I'm I'm very honored that uh, that you wanted to to share it here amidst the places you're sharing it. So excited to have you all on Rockfin. That's freaking awesome. You. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for everything yeah. you do. And let me give a quick thank you to Edwin, Megan, Black Freud, Luis, and Tepid for your Super Chat contributions. Thank you for helping make this show possible. And, of course, Indy Left for your Rockfin tip. Thank you guys for keeping this show on the air. And thank you for everything you do. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in on a Sunday. I appreciate you spending some of your Sunday with James and I. Check out James' show later this afternoon. He's probably going to go get ready for it. And yep. uh, yeah, buddy, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to Rockfin. And uh, y'all know the yeah. drill. Lucy says meow. And I say peace, love, and a general strike. James, do you say peace, love, and a general strike? And meow. And meow. <laughs> Go for the top, baby. Go yeah, for the yeah. top. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. In the meantime, peace. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs>